Welcome to Electron Online and here we're doing another example of how to find the volume of something but here instead of rotating an area around an axis we're simply going to find the volume of a square base pyramid. The base of the pyramid is 8 by 8, the height is 6 and the center of the base is located at where the x and the y axis cross. So how do we find the volume of something like this? Well the best way to do it is to find a small little dv, a slice of that uh, pyramid and what we can do is simply slice it like this there we go, there's my little slice and give it a little bit of a thickness to it like so and that's then my dv and let's say that dv can be uh, expressed, uh, let's say here if the, if the sides of this little volume element is a so we get a by a times the thickness which would be dy so we can say that the dv is equal to the area of this slice times dy and the area is equal to a squared dy the question is what is A equal to? Well, the way to do that is imagine again that the y-axis goes right down the middle of the pyramid. So the distance from that point where it goes right through that, uh, that volume element to the side of the pyramid, let's call that x. That is the distance from there to x in the x direction. The question is what is that x equal to related to y? To find that, let's draw a line from the very top through this very edge down to the side of the pyramid where it touches this thing right here so it can go right down like this and this line is a straight line a y equals mx plus b type of line y equals to mx plus b and all we have to do is find the slope of that line and find the intercept the intercept is easy that is right there where where it crosses the y-axis so we know that y is equal to mx plus six what about the slope well, the slope will be the rise over the run. In this case, the rise is a negative 6 because we drop. And the run is half the base of the pyramids from the center to the edge would be, would be 4. So that would be uh, y is equal to minus 6 over 4x plus 6 or y equals minus 3 over 2x plus 6. So that's the equation describing the edge of the pyramid at the middle, not at the corners, but at the middle of the pyramid, which defines the size of that little dv element right here. We know that the distance from there to there would be equal to x and we can then relate x to y in terms of this equation right here. So now we're ready to express what the area is of that. Notice that a is twice x so instead of a we have to write 2 times x so this is equal to 2x quantity squared times dy. Notice a is the full side of that element, x is only half of it, so we need two x's to make up one a. Okay, now we're ready to continue. Um, now we want to express this in terms of y because we have a dy there. And here's the key, there's a relationship between x and y. So let's solve this for x and then, and then replace that in for x over there. So let's first multiply both sides by 2, we get 2y is equal to minus 3x plus 12, that way we get rid of the divide by 2. Uh, now we want to move the 3x to one side, 3x equals 12 and move the 2y to the other side. And now divide both sides by 3, we get x is equal to 4 minus 2 thirds y. Okay, now we can take that and substitute that back in for x over there. And when we do that, we get the following. This is equal to the quantity 2 times uh, x would be 4 minus 2 thirds y and the whole quantity squared times dy. First let's get rid of parentheses so this is equal to 8 minus 4 thirds y quantity squared dy and then if we go ahead and square all that we get this is equal to 64 minus twice the product. Now 8 times 4 is 32 times 2 is 64 so minus 64 over 3y and then plus square that we get 16 over 9y squared and the whole thing times dy and now we have a nice volume element expressed in y variable only. Now we can go ahead and integrate because the volume is equal to the integral of all the dv's so what we're going to do is slice up all the, the whole pyramid all these slices add them all up and of course that's the definition of integration and so this is going to be equal to the integral of 64 minus 64 over 3 times y plus 16 over 9 y squared uh, times dy and the limits of integration we start from the bottom of the pyramid where y equals 0 
to the top of the pyramid where y is equal to 6. So we get y equals 0 to y equals 6. Now all we have to do is integrate this. So v is equal to, this becomes 64y minus 64 over 3, y squared over 2. Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, plus 16 over 9 times y cubed over 3, evaluate it from 0 to 6. Now notice when we plug in the lower limit, we get nothing but 0, so we can drop the lower limit. We just need to substitute in the upper limit. Well, first of all, we can go ahead and say 30, that's uh, 32 over 1, and, um, well, let me rewrite it so it's a little cleaner. So this is equal to 64y minus 32 over 3 times y squared, um, plus uh, 16 over 27y cubed, all evaluated from 0 to 6. All right, it's a little cleaner. So let's plug in the limits. V equals, we plug in 6 here, 6 times 64, that's 360, that's 384, minus, plug in 6 here, that's 36, 36 divided by 3 is 12, 12 times 32 is, hmm, same thing, 384. All right, plus, there we have 16 divided by 27 times 6 cubed. Now, 6 cubed is 216 divided by 27. 27 goes exactly into 216 eight times. So here we get 384 minus 384 is equal to 16 times 8, which is equal to 128, and that would be the volume of that pyramid. Now, just to check to make sure we did this correctly, let's check it with our equation where we know that the volume of a pyramid is equal to one-third the base times the height. Okay, that's equal to one-third the base. The base would be 8 by 8, so 8 times 8. And the height would be 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 8 times 8 is 64 times 2 is? Yes, indeed, 128. That gives us the same answer, so we know we did it correctly this time. All right, so that's how we find the volume of a pyramid. Again, the technique is the same. We find the little slides. We are able to define the slides in terms of area times the thickness. Then we change our variable to something that's more practical, x and y. Since we have a dy, we then have to convert the x into a y variable, and then we integrate. And that's the technique we use on all these types of problems. So hopefully, these last 10 examples have given you a really good idea of how to do that. In the future, I will also make some, some, uh, some uh, videos in which we actually do three-dimensional integration over a volume in all three dimensions, x, y, and z. And sometimes we'll also use polar and even spherical coordinates. So that will come later, but at least now you have a good handle on how to find the volume using these kind of techniques.